No true Christian denies that Jesus is God. No true Christian denies that the Father is God. But did you know that there are some Christians who don't accept the fact that the Holy Spirit is God? I'm going to show you in Scripture that the Holy Spirit is, in fact, equal in divinity with both the Father and the Son. Before I begin, I want to encourage you to subscribe to us on YouTube and click that notification bell when you subscribe so that you can receive notices when we release new content. We release teachings on the Holy Spirit, prayer, spiritual warfare, faith. You're going to love Encounter TV if you love the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. You can also follow us wherever you're watching us. I want to show you two main things here. First, I want to show you that the Holy Spirit is distinct from both the Father and the Son. And then I want to show you that He is equally divine as the Father and the Son. So first, let's take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 14. Notice here that the Scripture makes a distinction between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 13, 14 says, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Matthew 28, 19 says this, Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, we accept the divinity of the Father without question, of course. We as believers accept the divinity of the Son. No true believer doesn't believe that Jesus is God. That's the fundamental of the Christian faith, believing that Jesus is God. That's what it means to be a Christian. No true believer denies that the Father is divine. No true believer denies that the Son is divine. Yet when I say that the Holy Spirit is God, many believers cringe in discomfort. But look here in Scripture. The Bible refers to the Holy Spirit as Lord, 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now I'm going to show you something from the book of Isaiah. And when you read this from the book of Isaiah, without the revelation that the New Testament gives to it, then you'll miss something very key here. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 8 and 9 say this also. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Now here, we know that Isaiah the prophet is interacting with God. God is the one who spoke. The scripture says, and I heard the voice of the Lord saying. Now, you wouldn't know it unless you read Acts chapter 28, but this is actually the Holy Spirit speaking to Isaiah. Acts 28, verses 25 and 26. Watch this. And after they had argued back and forth among themselves, they left with this final word from Paul. The Holy Spirit was right when he said to your ancestors through Isaiah the prophet, go and say to this people, when you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. So the Old Testament scripture paired with the New Testament revelation reveals to us that in fact it was the Holy Spirit who was speaking to Isaiah the prophet. In fact, it was the Holy Spirit who spoke to every prophet. He was the voice of God speaking to these great men who spoke forth the oracles and mysteries of God. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of God. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 say this, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. So the Holy Spirit, the breath at the beginning, there from the beginning of time is God. He's called the Spirit of God. Now, looking at the various traits of the Holy Spirit, we see that He is, in fact, divine. The Holy Spirit 
is omniscient. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 12 says this, But it was to us that God revealed these things by His Spirit, for His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. So what the scripture is describing here is the fact that the Holy Spirit knows completely the mind of God. The Holy Spirit knows God's will. The Holy Spirit knows God's power. The Holy Spirit knows God's mind, His intentions, His nature. Everything that God knows, the Holy Spirit knows. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is omniscient. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. Now notice here that the scripture says that when the Holy Spirit comes upon her, that the power of the Most High will overshadow her. So therefore, the power of the Holy Spirit is the very same as the power of the Most High. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Psalm 139.7 says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. So the Holy Spirit, when we look to the scripture, is seen as distinct from the Father and the Son. And when we study it further, we see that the Holy Spirit is referred to as the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the one who interacted with the prophets. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is omniscient or all-knowing. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent or all-powerful. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent or everywhere at all times. So therefore, the Holy Spirit is God while well, being a unique member of the Trinity. The truth that each are distinct from one another yet equally divine and one God is the basis of the Trinity. Let me say that again. The truth that each are distinct from one another, yet equally divine and one God is the basis of the Trinity. What am I saying? I'm saying that because the scripture describes the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as distinct persons, well, equating them all as God, that is the basis for what we call the Trinity, the mystery of the Trinity. Now, I can see this truth encapsulated in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. In my opinion, this verse that we're about to read, the one from Hebrews, is the most powerful verse, the most powerfully persuasive verse concerning the Trinity. This is what it says, Hebrews 9, 14. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciences from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. Now watch this. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. So here we see that it was by the spirit, the Holy Spirit, that Christ, distinct from father and spirit, offered himself to God, the father. This is proof that the Holy Spirit is distinct from Father and Son and divine. Notice here that the scripture calls him the eternal spirit, everlasting, from everlasting to everlasting, never dies. He is eternity himself. The Holy Spirit is God. What does this mean for you and I? Well, think about it this way. The Bible says that our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that we can fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit teaches us. The Bible tells us the Holy Spirit will never leave us, that He dwells in us, that He walks with us. This means that God Himself dwells in you. This means that God Himself walks with you. Think of the wonderful privilege that is. 
We often hear it said, Oh, what a wonderful day it will be when we can walk with God side by side, such as Adam and Eve did in the garden before they fell into sin. I'm not waiting to get to heaven. Heaven lives in me. I'm not waiting to get into an atmosphere. I live in an atmosphere. Why? Because I'm a dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is God. You have God living in you. I'm not saying you are God. I'm saying you have God living in you. His power, His wisdom, His might available to you on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't have to live in bondage to sin. You don't have to live in confusion and depression and anxiety. You don't have to live in perversion. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit of God living in you. And because He is in you, you have the victory. Greater is He who is in me than he that is in the world. The Holy Spirit Himself, God Himself, dwells in my body. What a powerful truth. Father, help them receive it. Reveal to them, Lord, that which is in them. Reveal to them, Lord, the power that is available to them on a daily basis. I pray even now, Holy Spirit, that you would make your presence known. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. Well, that is it for the lesson. Here now is a question for conversation. Why do you suppose that some believers struggle with accepting the truth that the Holy Spirit is God? Let me know in the comments I'm going to read to you now comments from a previous video titled, This Message Will Elevate Your Prayer Life. On that video, Vashti Charisma writes, It is impossible to accomplish nothing in prayer. She's quoting the sermon. Amen. I needed this message right now. This blessed me. Melanie Troutner writes, Thank you. God bless you for speaking such a good and timely message. Esther writes, Thank you, David. I tend to worry a lot about almost everything, but now I know what to do. Pray about everything. Lily writes, peace precedes revelation. Thank you so much, Brother David, for another wonderful teaching. And the final comment that I'll read from the video titled, This Message Will Elevate Your Prayer Life, comes from Robin Lindenberg, who writes, Thank you for your efforts. I find your sermon extremely helpful and encouraging. God bless you and your team. If you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell when you do so that you can receive notices when we release new content. Also, you can follow us wherever you're watching us. Now, I want to take a moment to challenge you to be a part of what God is doing through this ministry. We host miracle services around the world at which people are saved, healed, delivered, filled with the Holy Spirit, and refreshed in God's presence. We do live streams that are seen all around the world. We host the Holy Spirit School, which is an online Bible training program that's absolutely free. God is using His ministry to take the gospel around the world in the power of the Holy Spirit, and you can be a part of it. If you have a passion for souls, if you desire to see the kingdom of God expanded around the world, then partner with our ministry on a monthly basis by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Sign up for a monthly gift of any amount, but make sure you go to that website, davidhernandezministries.com slash partner, to see all of the partner benefits that we offer to those who support our ministry on a monthly basis. These monthly partnerships make all the difference in the world. They help us to plan better, they help us to grow the ministry, and they help us to structure things in a way where we can deliver with excellence. Again, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner to become a monthly supporter. You can also give a one-time gift by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.